we are in another Formula One GP week, and we're in my home territory. We're in the U.S. Uh, Grand Prix in Austin, Circuit, Circuit of Americas, and it's Tuesday. So we're going to talk a little bit more of the technical stuff. Uh, sometimes I do Tire Talk Tuesday. This time I'm going to do a little bit more of the Tech Talk Tuesday, where it's going to be more uh, circuit-focused. Um, but let's get straight into it. So... Um, I am still waiting for a comprehensive report of the actual teams and the boots they're bringing. So I don't actually have that uh, fully uh, yet in terms of getting back, you know, hearing back from a couple people and some official sources. So we're going to go through the circuit, um, a little bit more of the circuit analysis. Uh, I don't. I wish Pirelli did this more. So I kind of put it on my own uh, scale and kind of made a little circle graph. And I'm, I've updated my camera encoder too. So I'm, I don't, I'm kind of trying to be careful with how many programs I have because it's on 4K right now. So let me know if this... If you guys can tell the difference or it's preferable and if you're new to the channel make sure to like and uh, make sure to subscribe more than anything so you get these updates and alerts so let's get technical we are at the circuit of americas this happens to be one of my favorite circuits it's a little bit down the middle in terms of the typical things i end up talking about in this channel so some of the um some of the lateral loads the downforce and things like that so i and you know i i go through so many of these videos and have so many of these conversations i feel like this little circle graph, these little circle graphs should be um, interesting or at least easy to follow. So, uh, and I've, I've cross compared these. I'm not making these up. I've compared these to the scale that Pirelli have them on too. So this is comparable to what Pirelli actually named. So I know for sure that the compounds that have been elected are C2, C3, C4, just like Mexico. And uh, actually, just like Mexico, the other thing that the Circuit of Americas has in common this year is that they're a step up. So from the hyper soft, super soft, you remember last year, I think Kimmy won on the, it's, I put it in this blog, but Kimmy won on the super softs, one stop strategy. So it's going to be really interesting. And anyone who found last week's boring, I'd love to, we'd have a conversation why it wasn't, but I actually don't think it was, honestly. I, th I thought it was incredible what Lewis ended up doing on those, on those white tip C2s. So we are going C2, C3, C4 a step harder than last year. If I can get around to saying that. So that's what New Mexico has in common with the U.S. Grand Prix. The U.S. Grand Prix was on the softer compound. Uh, so this year, Pirelli went with the harder compounds, and they noted everything that occurred. Um, I didn't end up making any content about this, but they also noted that the the F1 tire, whatever little infographic, the visual is, is bogus. It's basically out the window. So don't follow that. Just a warning. Um, and I talked a lot about this to, with you guys, actually. I was thinking about this when I was prepping for this video. Uh, I warned you about the C2s and Mercedes and how it was weird that in FP2, they were doing extensive testing on the hards. And at the time, I was saying, look, they're, they've settled with the fact that Ferrari are the straight line speed experts. They got them in all those places. They got to play the strategy game. And it turned out to be right. They tested those hards for a reason. And... Um, I don't know if Red Bull reacted, and I guess it was out of circumstance. Max had to stay on those hards that long, but Lewis, they were very strict, and his onboard is ridiculous how often he's complaining about his tires. But uh, I, I think the the stand-in for Bono, I can't remember the, the gentleman's name, not that he watches this channel, well, whatever, but um, he did a really good job managing Lewis and be like, look, calm down, we did all the testing. So they tested those hard uh, compounds extensively in FP2. So I, I gave you guys that report. That's why those reports, if you can't catch them, no one watches FP2. I don't expect you to watch FP2. So just check out these videos for it because I'll talk about that. Um, and the other thing to note in this, and you can see them on screen here too. I'll kind of zoom up. I'm trying to do it slow so the webcam doesn't break because, again, it's in 4K. The tire stress is at a 60, lateral loads at an 80. This is all out of 100. So you can tell it's a little bit down the middle. The lateral loads are a little bit higher. Um, and that's because of the twisties and turns, and they've got the uphill, famous for that hairpin uphill. Uh, so the downforce is pretty normal. Asphalt is definitely low on the lower end, and the asphalt, that's the grip, but the abrasion is a little bit higher. That's because of the lateral loads are a little bit higher. And the downforce are downforces down the middle to slightly higher. Um, but... The, the thing I want to note is if you can catch FP1 and you're kind of a tire nerd like me or you're interested in pace and things like, like you don't have to be a self-loathing tire nerd, but if you are sick of F1 being quote unquote boring, um, it is it has a lot to do with the tire, of course, but make sure to check out FP1 this year because they are testing the 2020 compounds. So in FP1 and FP2 Friday alone, they're going to be testing those compounds. So check that out. I'm going to be doing a pretty extensive um analysis of that and you'll uh, you know a lot of people are on obviously roles reversed 
uh, a lot of people making content in F1 are not going to be able to update as quick because they're so uh, everyone and you know in London and BST is is five hours. So it's going to be pretty late for some of those guys. Um, but you know when it's hey when it's early in the morning you don't see me complaining. I'm maybe a little cranky, but um, yeah, I got the quote here from Mario Sola too. But check out FP1 and FP2. I'll make sure to have those updates um, and I'll give you kind of how the 2020 tire compounds went. They did Barcelona, so this is um, this is just one of the this was they've always planned for this, so it's not like new. But uh, yeah, so the circuit itself, I, I think the they're officially saying, uh, and I actually haven't found this, but I think they're officially going to say that a long stent harder compound one one stopper is going to win, um, and that's exactly what won last year for Kimi. Now now here's where it gets really interesting. They want to step up. And we just saw what happened in Mexico, where they're going on 60 laps, 66 laps. Lewis set a purple uh, on lap like 61 on hards. Uh, that's that's insane. That's absurd. These tires are really hard. I'm not going to say too hard, but um, we'll see what the compounds do. But um, this will be, in my estimation, a one-stop strategy uh, going from a, a very hard pushed medium to a C2 hard tip compound, which they're, they're going to be able to push as hard as they want. So... From that perspective, it might be quote unquote boring, but I think where this one's different is now people understand the tire compounds, what they can do. Those mediums are going to get pushed. They're going to get pushed like the softest of softs in Singapore or, or in like Monaco. They're going to get absolutely pushed when they want to. So I think the the lap times in the first couple laps, that first stint, are going to be mega. So I expect a, a pretty wild first 10 laps, but that's, um, that's basically the, the circuit breakdown. Uh, in terms of the actual numbers and the technical components themselves. Um, yeah, so I've got the, I'll actually be uploading more of, if you guys like it, that um, that infographic I made where it's got the different speeds and the change and the gear shifts. Um, but Pirelli, uh, Mario had this to say of Pirelli, Austin has always been renowned for putting on a great show both on and off the track this year in part, is particularly significant as where the teams will get to sample next year's tires for the first time. I've talked about this. So the 2020 C4 soft compounds. Uh, this, of course, is just the initial taste of the 2020 C4 soft compounds before teams get a taste uh, test the full uh, homo homologated range of next year's tires at the two-day test in December following the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that's basically he goes through on and on and talks about the tires. But that is the circuit breakdown. You got a 60 in the tire stress. I'm mean, the rating I got on it. The lateral loads at an 80 out of 100. Asphalt grip at a 40, and so um, 60 for asphalt abrasion and 60 for downforce. But this video is meant to just give you more of like a you know get you going, get you in the F1 mindset, and so there's no surprises. So. From a technical perspective, like I said, they're going to be testing the 2020 P0 tires in FP1 and FP2. Expect a, probably a pretty aggressive one-stop strategy, uh, pushing on these these hard tip C2s. And then other than that, I'll, I'll make sure to bring you some more updates. We'll have the actual tire breakdowns. I probably won't make a video about it. I'll just post on the blog. You can see the blog in the description section. Make sure to subscribe to have a wide range of content. This one's a little bit more boring for some people, interesting for others. So. I'm just going to make it either way. So uh, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, if you have any requests for any type of content, let me know, and it's yours. Talk soon, guys. Thanks a lot.